And Luke Smith joins me in the studio now once again, as usual. And uh, as you've been doing for the last few weeks, Luke, you've mm. brought with you a bodyguard, somebody I to have. protect you from my aggressive nature. You know what I have? And if there was a bet late, I reckon Sarah could take Chris Miller. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I backed Sarah in to take Chris Miller from a couple of weeks ago, so you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad well, thing. Well, let's do the honours. Please introduce yeah. your guest. Yeah, look, it's it's we're wrapping up property sort of month, and I thought it'd be really good to get somebody in who's a specialist in the paperwork side of things. So Sarah's here today from Trinity Law. They specialise and have a really extensive team that work in conveyancing property, legals on the property side, and anything to do with, with property. So well, I thought it'd be great to get her in and talk about what happens on the paperwork side of an acquisition because buying a property is generally a really big transaction for most people. So we're just going to touch on what is conveyancing, why is it important, why getting advice is is, is really sort of vital and some of the tips and traps that, that she sees and how that sector has sort of evolved and any changes that have come up by way of legislation. So there's a there's a bit to sort of chat through but Thanks very much for coming in. I appreciate the guys, you know, letting you out of the office early. Uh, not a problem at all. Great to be here. Um, when it comes to buying a property, what, for the listeners, what is conveyancing or the, the act of conveyancing and why do people need it? So I guess the basic premise or the, the minimum thing that happens in terms of a conveyance is transferring the ownership of a property from one person to another. Um, so that's um, the main thing that we're hoping to achieve. Obviously, then, as part of that, there are additional things that you might be looking into in terms of making sure that the property you're buying is um, a good one or in good condition, all of those sorts of things. But the real basic um, issue is making sure that the property is transferred from one name to another. So when, when that happens, so I buy the property, I'm all excited, and I come to somebody like you and I say, I've bought this thing, and over here I've got the finance side of it, which then involves the bank and the seller, you then sort of coordinate the paperwork in relation to the legal transfer, as well as then lining up, which I bet is great fun, lining up with the banks to actually get that money to change hands and, and, and put a really nice bow around it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you've, as you've probably touched on, banks are a bit of a law unto themselves on that front. Um, and so each individual banks have different requirements, um, but the main thing that we want to make sure is that for all of them, um, that we can sort of get everything organised as far as possible to make sure that when it's time to hand over the money, that everyone's ready to do that. Right. Now I'm going to ask a, a fairly fundamental question here, but when somebody's buying a property, when should they seek the services of a lawyer? Should they do that before they've signed a contract? Well, because my thought is maybe you want your lawyer to have a look at it before you sign it. We would absolutely say yes to that uh, point in time, that yes to that um, question. There's obviously big obligations, um, and for a lot of people, this is, um, buying a property is the biggest thing um, that they'll do. Mm. Um, you know, it's obviously a, a huge investment in terms of both emotionally, you know, people get quite attached to homes, whether that's buying or selling, um, but also in terms of dollars. Um, mm. And getting us involved at the start um, can mean that, um, you know, mistakes in terms of the, the process um, or problems in terms of the quality of a, a property or unexpected um, issues that might come up hopefully can be minimised. Um, or at least factored into your sort of your set of risks or into the price. Is, is that where somebody like yourself steps in and if there were concerns around the purchase or the terms of the, the contract? I'm going to buy into this unit block. I don't like, you know, we were chatting before the show about, you know, the cladding outside. We've seen the fire issues of late mm -hmm. of, of different ages of different properties. Those sorts of things can be argued, fixed, negotiated, taken in, put out of contracts. That's really one of the importances of doing it before you commit to anything. Yeah, that's exactly right. And one of the things that we see, I guess, coming up is sometimes at auctions, that's where people often don't necessarily think about getting that advice beforehand. And perhaps not realising that, you know, from the fall of the hammer at the auction, you're, you're locked into the process. Um, and so absolutely, uh, it's important to have a full picture of what a property um, is about. If there's problems with it, that might be fine. If you're happy to pay the, you know, factor that into your price. Mm. As long as you're aware of something, you can sort of then make an informed decision about whether that's something that you want to proceed with 
or not? See, I think that's a really good point because I don't think many listeners out there would actually consider the legal implications of going to an auction where you go in and turn up on a Saturday and wave the hammer around and get all wrapped up, your heart's racing and you know, your partner's saying, this is the house of your dreams and you're standing there with a pedal going, I'll better get it at any cost. Mm -hmm. And as you say, then through that type of transaction, you have no recourse around things that may or may not be appropriate or, or relevant to the property. Do you have the ability to attain the, the contract paperwork prior to auction so that you could investigate something like that before the, the specific day that it's undertaken? Yeah, absolutely. And in the ACT and New South Wales, there's legislation that basically says that a seller has to have what's called a marketing contract or a draft version of the contract available at open homes. Um, and if you request it to be able to provide it to your solicitor as well. Because obviously once the hammer falls, uh, you can't make any changes to things. You can't negotiate new terms or conditions or any new clauses in the contract. But conversely, if you're not at an auction, if you're negotiating a purchase, you can add a clause that you want or delete a clause that you want uh, before you actually sign it. Yeah, absolutely. It's like uh, any other contract to a large degree. It's an agreement between the parties. Um, and so where you have, um, you know, you're negotiating with the other party and they agree, absolutely things can be changed, updated. Um, but equally, if you're negotiating with someone who's a bit stubborn or uh, that sort of thing, you might not be so lucky to change those terms, but provided that you're aware of that, you might be happy to proceed or not. Like you could ask that they As, put in a, another clause in the contract saying, yes, I will purchase your property on the condition that you remove those hideous curtains before you go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we know what's in the contract. We're happy to go to auction. We're successful in sort of picking up the property. We've already got our finance on the side because that's normally a very good idea to do. In relation to some lingo, you know, we were chatting earlier, some lingo that, that, that is very prevalent. Let's just sort of cover off what some of these headings sort of mean. So when people heard the word settlement, what, what does that legally mean? So settlement's the point in time where um, the legal ownership of the property is transferred. Practically that means uh, the buyer needs to be able to turn up with the money, whether that's themselves or through their bank. Um, and the seller needs to be able to arrange um, for their bank um, to hand over the certificate of title or the right to deal with the property yep. uh, and the keys. And that's basically when you're able then to sort of move in if that's what you're doing, deal with a tenant, all of that sort of thing. Okay, and then we've got, prior to that, we've got exchange. Yeah, so exchange is when everything gets locked in. So we were talking about an auction before, that's the fall of the hammer basically is when everything's locked in. But where you're making um, an offer uh, to a seller or to an agent directly, um, exchange is the point in time where you exchange a copy of the contract signed by the seller with a copy of the contract signed by the buyer. Um, it's sort of a bit of a strange legal um, term or a legal thing to do, but it's basically then the point in time that everything's locked in. Where you're negotiating with an agent, um, just because you've made an offer that might be accepted, um, doesn't mean that anybody is locked in to that deal at that point in time. The seller could change their mind and the buyer can still change their mind too. So as a buyer, you can make an offer on a property and you can even sign a contract with that offer, but it's not valid until the seller also signs it. Yeah, so in the ACT, it's, it's a little bit strange, but there'll actually be two copies of the contract, typically, yeah. one signed by the seller and one signed <coughs> by the buyer. All right, so we can negotiate our deals. We've got it in place. We're successful with our exchange. Transfer duty or stamp duty, where does that fall into the process? So in the ACT these days, um, that is payable after settlement. Um, right. It's a significant amount of money, typically. Uh, mm -hmm. There can sometimes be concessions or exemptions that apply. Um, but in the ACT, um, once the property has been registered into your name, you'll then get a notice basically 14 days afterwards. In New South Wales, it's a little bit different. You have to pay within 90 days of exchange or settlement whichever one is earlier. Right, and the actual process of, of, of undertaking this. Now, I understand in New South Wales, they've sort of leaped ahead in the, in the tech space as opposed to the ACT, and is now all electronic, or it's moved to an electronic platform? Yeah, it's, um, uh, back in the day, we used to sit around a table for a settlement, and someone would hand over a bank check, and you'd get a certificate of title, and you'd have to check everything very carefully. Um, but these days, all of that happens in an online platform called PEXA, um, which is where um, representatives from each party and each bank can meet 
cheat electronically and, and do those same things to affect a settlement. Has that made the, the bank side of the process any easier? Because most of the people in this space that are dealing with lenders say that the banking side of things is probably the, the most dubious part of the process. Has that improved that any? I think it has in terms of settlement. Um, in terms of uh, getting a finance approval through sort of at the start of things, banks are still um, a bit of the wild west. I won't say the wild west, but they mm -hmm. are um, uh, a law unto themselves in that you think your finance approval is about to be through and then they ask you for two more pay slips or your last bass or explain what you're spending this money on. So up front, um, they're still, uh, there's a lot of admin on that side of things. But in terms of settlement, my experience has been that it's much easier to um, get things on board for a settlement at the last minute. For a long time, uh, banks had a lot of their uh, safe deposit facilities in Sydney, um, and they were all operating out of Sydney and were classed as a rural sort of outpost of Sydney. Mm -hmm. Not surprising. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> but which meant that things had to be posted down here. If there was a mistake in some documents, they had to be resent. That could take days in terms of arriving. So my experience has been that, that texts are on this e-conveyancing platform. Um, makes things simpler or at least means that there's a quick turnaround if, if there is a problem. And is that coming to the ACT? Is it, is, are they flirting with that idea now that New South Wales have bedded it down? Yeah, so it's definitely in the ACT at the moment. It's not mandatory like it is in New South Wales. Um, so there are still, every now and then we'll still sit around the table and hand over a cheque and um, get the bits and pieces in return. Um, but more and more I think it is moving into the ACT. Luke Smith from Envision Financial is with me in the studio and alongside him, Sarah Mason-Jones from Trinity Law. We're talking about all of the uh, details that you need to keep across when you're buying or selling a property. We'll be back with more in just a moment, 11 to 5 now. Seven minutes to five, Luke Smith from Envision Financial is with me in the studio and alongside him, Sarah Mason-Jones from Trinity Law. Today we're talking about conveyancing and why it's so important to have proper professional advice. So Sarah, what are the key things to remember when it comes to conveyancing? I guess uh, there are probably three main things that I'd say. Um, one is be prepared and organised, generally. Um, the biggest one on that front is typically your finance approval, dealing with a bank, if you're going to have um, a bank involved. Oh yes, and that means you need that clause in your contract too, that this contract is subject to finance approval, because otherwise you could find yourself in all sorts of trouble. That's exactly right, or even better, um, get it in advance if you can mm. get the, the bits and pieces through in advance. Um, the second thing would be to make sure that um, you're comfortable with the condition of the property that you're buying. Um, and the ACT is making some good strides in that front about having a, a, you know, a building and pest report um, or minutes from a strata complex included in a contract. New South Wales is still very much buyer beware on that front. And that's sometimes where the devil can be in a bit of the detail. Once you've locked in the property um, or locked in the purchase, um, you're locked into purchasing that property sort of as is, warts and all. Um, and if that means that it's in a strata complex um, and there might be defects from when the developer um, built the property or if there's cladding issues in terms of um, you know, fire rated cladding and that sort of thing, um, they can really be um, significant issues in the future. And you know, with a house, it's a thing uh, that would be if there's termites um, or something like that, things that can cost you a lot of money in the future or unapproved structures. Um, that's the sort of thing that you want to be comfortable that you're aware of all the ins and outs of the property itself. And then the third one, I guess, would be the contract. Um, and to make sure that you have um, a good understanding of what the contract requires of you. There can be penalty interest in there. There can be other delay clauses um, and things of that nature. And you want to make sure that you're comfortable with those risks um, or with what those clauses require of you in the, in the big picture. In terms of the nitty gritty, it's probably things like making sure your ID, you've got current ID um, and that it's all in the same name. Um, you'd be surprised how often people um, have different names on different pieces of ID. Mm. Um, and my birth certificate is an example that rather than a hyphen in my last name, it's got a plus. That's caused me some... <laughs> <laughs> some how did they do the that? Obviously, it was on the typewriter back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just hit the, the wrong... original. Yeah. No water. <laughs> Let's hit the wrong button. But that sort of thing can periodically sort of um, crop up as a, as a bit of an issue. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, so um, you're, and the most important piece of advice whatsoever, of course, is make sure you've got a good lawyer. 
I would probably agree with that. Yeah, look, I think I think people, I can't stress enough, go and look at it. You know, we spoke with Chris and, and, and some of the other guys earlier this month about commercial and resi, and one of the key things there was do your homework and be prepared. Don't assume that it's all cupcakes and rainbows. Have somebody look at the agreement because, as Sarah said, if you get caught with something you haven't considered, especially in a strata environment, you could have tens of thousands of dollars of expenses that you weren't prepared for. So I think this is probably, the, for me, the most important part of the transaction. Outside of keeping a loved one happy and finding the house of your <laughs> dreams or the, the unit of your dreams for a loved one, yeah. get, get the paperwork right. So Luke, where can listeners get more information? Yeah, office number 6260-4749. We've got envisionfinancial.com.au on the internet. We've got the podcast, The Strategy Stacker, Luke Talks Money, that's on iTunes and Spotify. We've got, as my daughter says, The Tiki Talker. Um, we've got the book, Smart Money to Strategy, The Ultimate Guide to Financial Planning. And that's available in all good bookstores, Amazon, Dimix, and inside and outside the ACT. Sarah, we've covered a lot of information today. If people want to get in touch in relation to their conveyancing needs, where can they reach you? Uh, probably the first port of call would be our website, trinitylaw.com.au. We also have an office in Kingston um, at 55 Wentworth Avenue, and our office number is 6163 5050. Cool. And no doubt, you're all over the internet like the rest <laughs> of the guys for all the right reasons. That's it, that's it. Unlike, unlike Mark and Chris from last week. All right, well done. Thanks very much, Sarah. No problem. And Thank Luke, you. thanks for coming in once again, and we'll see you again next Friday. Right. We'll see you next week. Luke Smith from Envision Financial back again next Friday with uh, more money matters right here on 2 C.